People are complex, especially when under duress. I am always reticent to give simple answers to difficult questions, not because I think that there are never simple answers that suffice, but because it often shows a lack of respect for the person in need of help. Before you dive in and offer guidance to someone, it's important you take some time to understand the particulars of their situation and why or why not they feel a certain way. Telling someone to be strong and not fearful is silly advice in these times of coronavirus. It may diminish how they are feeling and even worse may make them feel weak and not up to the challenge. Sure, some individuals benefit from a kick in the pants and a toughen up speech, but not everyone. COVID-19 is not deterred by bravery. People have different capacities to handle fear, risk, uncertainty, etc. And this should be okay. No one has the market cornered on proactive, positive, and courageous behavior. We all feel things to varying degrees. Sometimes we may be a source of strength to others. Other times we might need a helping hand or shoulder to cry on ourselves. If you think you've got it all figured out, then good for you. But that will put you in a very small minority of human beings. Just remember that life has a way of testing our own conceits. Often all someone needs for you to do is listen without judgment, to be empathetic with their plight, whatever that may be. Just by making their feelings known, it may make them feel better, possibly even validated. No one wants to feel less than or incapable in a moment of personal crisis. They want encouragement, friendship, and yes, even love. The world can seem a scary place, and if courage was easy to come by, more people would consistently exercise it. It may be an overused concept, but what we can control is our own actions, especially if you're in a position of leadership. You can do your best to demonstrate the actions, behaviors most needed at a time of trouble, even when you personally feel out of your depth. However, this needs to be authentic. It's okay to be human. Letting them know you are also worried is a good way to help them adjust to the new reality. Accepting reality and our initial emotional response to it is part of the journey. You just can't get mired there. Positive action, not emotion, will make or break you in a time of crisis. No leader has all the answers, but you should keep asking the questions that lead to progress. Make those around you part of the solutions, and they may surprise you with how well they can adapt and flourish. People also need to hear from you that you accept and believe in them despite their human frailties. What they mostly need to feel is that together, we as a company, team, group, and family can navigate collectively whatever comes our way. Small groups of individuals have accomplished great things against enormous odds throughout the course of human history. I am certain they were frightened at times. They probably had all sorts of natural emotional reactions to what was going on. I doubt the leaders of these groups were completely self-assured. Yet somehow they figured out a way to work through it, and so were we. My best guess is that that was through allowing each other the space to be human, while at the same time channeling their collective energy and talents into positive action that made the difference. It's not the fear, it's what you do with it that matters. The best leaders don't make others feel weak or incapable. They embrace their own humanity while accepting the different emotional capacities of those they lead. They don't offer simple trite answers to complex situations. They take stock of the environment around them and proceed step by step towards a better place in spite of their own weaknesses. They make it safe to be you. They expect you to bring the best version of you to the environment. Together we can handle just about anything. Separated from one another, we are vulnerable.